Welcome to Roughing It With Ruth, the channel where everything is a bit rough around the edges. In this video, I'm going to go over how I do all of my preparation for the Otter Trail from booking right up until you actually set foot on the trail on the first day. We're going to start at 12 to 6 months before you actually start the trail. That is the period of time when I usually book for the trail. The Otter Trail is extremely popular and booking it is really difficult, particularly if you want really specific dates or if you're trying to book all 12 spots. If you're just a single person or a couple and you're very flexible with dates, then you can pick up cancellations much closer to the time, in which case, good for you, you can skip ahead in this video further down the timeline. Then at about six months before I'm going to start the trail, I like to book my flights because I live in Gauteng, which is quite far away from the Otter Trail, so I need to fly in. If you happen to live closer by, then you can skip this step, obviously. This is also the time when I start sourcing all of my backpacking gear. So make sure that you have a backpack, a sleeping bag, a stove, good shoes to do the hike in, all of those sorts of things. Now we are at three months before we're going to start the trail and this is the point when I seriously start training for the Otter Trail. I've got a couple of other videos about training for the Otter Trail that you can go and watch. I'll link them in the video description as well. It does take your body quite a long time to adjust to new training, so make sure that you give it the correct amount of time for that. I also use the time from about three months before I'm going to start to book accommodation for before and after the trail and to book things like shuttles if I need a shuttle from the airport or a shuttle between the start and end of the trail. Because remember, the Otter Trail is not a circular trail. The starting point and the ending point are at different places. Now it is about a month before we're going to set foot on the Otter Trail. And at this point, I like to organize to do a shakedown overnight backpacking trip somewhere. I usually do it somewhere in Gauteng because that just happens to be the most convenient for me. I have used Ezem Velo Nature Reserve as an overnight hike before because they also have a kind of dormitory style arrangement where it's very similar to the Otter Trail. And this just allows you to test out your gear and your clothing and test out the food that you're going to be wanting to take with you so that you have the best chance of succeeding with all of those things on the Otter Trail and you still have enough time to change them if one of them doesn't really work for you. One month beforehand, it's also really important that you get your medical form filled in by a medical practitioner that can stamp and sign the form. They are not going to allow you to start the trail without that form and the form is valid for 30 days. Of course, you still need to be doing all of your training and because you're now at one month before, you probably have a fairly good base level of fitness. So you can start adding some slightly more specific training that would be stair training for the otter. You can even try practicing doing a bit of night hiking if you know that you are going to be doing some night hiking for the Blokrans River crossing on day four. Two weeks before you're going to start, I like to buy all of my non-perishable food items. So particularly if you're using a commercial hiking food that's freeze-dried or dehydrated, now is a good time to order it so it's time to get to you. And I also like to buy any other consumables that I might need, like toiletries or sanitary items. You can even get gas or fuel for your stove at this point if you are not going to be flying. Because remember, you cannot take gas canisters on an aeroplane. You can't take them in checked luggage or hand luggage. They're not allowed on board at all. So it's now one week before you start. At this point, if you have not done training for the otter, there's no real point in starting a training plan right now. There's just not enough time for your body to adapt and there's a high chance that trying to train now is going to leave you injured and unable to do the trail. 
But there are things that you can do at this point. You can test out all of your gear at home in a safe environment, test out your stove, sleep in your sleeping bag, wear the clothes that you're planning to be using on the hiking trail. It's also a really good idea one week before to make sure that you are eating healthy and drinking enough water and maybe taking a few vitamins or something to help you prevent getting sick. You definitely don't want to fall ill and then be unable to go on the otter trail. Then one to two days before you're going to start, I like to pack my entire backpack. And this also allows me to see where things are going to fit the best. Maybe I've changed out a bit of gear since the last shakedown hike that I did. Another thing that I like to do one to two days before I start is cut my toenails. I cannot tell you how many times I've had some kind of toe or toenail issue on a hike because I've forgotten to do this. So one to two days beforehand, cut your toenails. And of course, when you are packing your backpack those one to two days beforehand, make sure that you pack in your medical form and your indemnity form, specifically your medical form. You will not be allowed to start the trail without it, so make sure that you have it. I also like to buy the perishable portion of my food at this point. It is now the night before you're going to start the trail. I really like booking accommodation at Storms River Mouth Rest Camp the night before I start the hike because that just means that you are right at the place where you need to be and you don't have to worry too much about additional travel on that day. Because the indemnity form that you're meant to fill in is meant to be all of the people in your group on one form, this is often a really good time for everyone to get together and sign that indemnity form and fill in all of their details in preparation for it to be handed in the next day when you start. I also like to fill up all of my water for the next day and just repack my backpack, making sure that I have all of the items that I'm going to need ready to go. So it is now finally the day that you've been waiting for, the day when you are going to start the Otter Trail. If you have stayed overnight at the accommodation at Storms River Mouth Rest Camp, just remember that you are going to need to get all the way back up to the reception area near the gate at the top of that very big hill. So if you have a couple of cars, then that's great. You can shuttle people up there. Otherwise, you are going to have to allocate a fair amount of time to walk up that very, very steep hill all the way back to reception. At reception, you're going to need to hand in your signed medical forms and the indemnity form and also pay any outstanding conservation fees. Remember that the fee for the Otter Trail itself does not include the conservation fees per day which you will have to pay in advance when you start the Otter Trail. I think they are currently at 80 Rand a day and you have a five day trail ahead of you. And you are also going to need to go to the Otto Room where you will be shown an orientation video before you start your hike. In that Otto Room, there's also a really nice displayed map of the entire trail that you're going to be walking. I like to take my cell phone and just take a little picture of each day. The map is quite wide, so it's a bit difficult to fit the entire thing in in one picture, but you can take one picture of it as well if you like. And that just gives me a bit of peace of mind that on the trail, if I forget which day has which river or which water sources, then I'll be able to look back at those photos and immediately see. If you're going to be shuttling cars around, then this is also going to be the moment when you need to do that. Typically, people leave some cars at the start and some cars at the end. Storms River Mouth and Nature's Valley are not that far apart, so it is quite feasible to just drive a couple of cars in between before you start the trail. The earliest that you are allowed to start the Otter Trail is 10 a.m. And then all that is left to do is to enjoy the trail that you have prepared so hard for. If you have any of your own tips or you think that I've left something out in this video, then please leave me a comment below because I would love to know how to make my own Otter preparation a bit more efficient as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you would like to see more from me, then you can click on my channel name to see videos that I've made in the past or you can subscribe to my channel to see videos that I'm going to make in the future.